My name's Dustin Kirkland, I'm a product manager at Google, and I'm here with Maya Kaczorowski, also a product manager at Google, and she knows everything about security. I certainly and, don't know everything about okay. security. <laughs> enough, enough that we're going to talk about security. Sounds good. Uh, especially the security vulnerability space around Kubernetes. What, uh, what interesting vulnerabilities have you seen recently? Yeah, in the last couple of months, we've had a couple of interesting vulns. So, you know, let's look at 2019. Uh, there was a run C vulnerability earlier this year, which was effectively a container escape. Mm. And then more recently, uh, the Alpine images uh, had a, uh, newer versions have a root default password, which which is kind of scary, scary looking. Yeah, well, and what was that password, just so we know? Uh, I don't I think it was just null. I think it was null, <laughs> I think you're exactly right. <laughs> yeah, which is, which is terrifying. And then obviously we've also had some additional speculative execution vulnerabilities that have been announced. So yeah. lots of things affecting uh, the kernel and OSs and the Kubernetes space recently. Yeah, and what are we, what are we learning? Are we learning anything from this, uh, trying to make Kubernetes and our space better? I think I think one, one thing for people to realize is that Kubernetes is actually really good at managing patches and vulnerabilities, right? Kubernetes has a product security team that handles Kubernetes specific bones, and then probably your cloud provider is is managing a lot of that stuff for you. Um, on GCP, we we manage the patches for you, and you can check out the security bulletins to see how you've been patched. Uh, but what we're also seeing is a lot of interest from security researchers in the space uh -huh. and seeing what's going on and you know can they exploit these vulnerabilities in, in live environments. So right. the the Run C vuln had um, you know proofs of concept available within a matter of days. Okay. Um, and the, and the, how quickly were patches available? Patches were available, so it was embargoed, and oh, at, at announcement, the patches were available. Okay. Good, good. Um, the and the uh, Alpine images, um, you know, a security researcher uh, recently found out that 20% of them, 20% uh, of the top Docker Hub images were using uh, the null password, which yeah. is which is absolutely terrifying. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh, and then, so that's Kubernetes itself. What about the applications inside of Kubernetes? How are we, uh, how are we approaching this in a modern containerized software world that, I don't know, hopefully is a little bit better than prior generations of software? Yeah, that's a good point. I think people just say, think of like attacks on containers as being only one category, but you can split it up between attacks on the infrastructure, like mm -hmm. towards the Kubernetes API server, versus attacks on applications, which just happen to be running in containers. Right. And so for applications that happen to be running in containers, we're not seeing attacks in the wild that are uh, significantly different or significantly more common than you would see in any other environment. Okay. Um, what's, what's happening is people are looking, people, attackers are lazy, right? They're looking for vulnerabilities that, that have been unpatched for years and seeing if they can exploit those and they don't they don't seem to care whether or not it's a it's a containerized application hmm. would it be fair to say that that modern ci cd and the way we use that in in kubernetes should be helping our ability to to, to patch safely and reliably it should right if you think about a container you're you're not uh, patching a live container. You're actually patching a container that sits in a re an image that sits in a registry, and then rebuilding and redeploying that that container. Mm. Um, so patching becomes as easy for you to implement okay. as your typical your normal rollout process. Right. right. You can actually patch something with the same canarying, testing, deployment, all, all those tools that you would use anyways, right. and make it much safer than you would otherwise. Right. What that should mean in theory. Um, although not always in practice, is that you should be able to patch more often yeah. and patch more easily than you would have been able to do before. Yeah. yeah. And do you think we're seeing that yet? I think we are. Yeah. I, you know, I, I hear some customers who are uh, tearing down their entire environment and redeploying it every X hours, yeah. X days, for sure. Right. GKE and security. What are some of the things we're doing to push the envelope uh, in that space? Sure. So at our recent Next conference, Google Cloud announced a couple things. Uh, we have binary authorization, which is our, our way of enforcing that containers meet certain requirements before they get deployed to production. Uh, GCR vulnerability scanning. This is kind of related to what we were just talking about around patching things before they end up in production. So you actually can apply apply certain patches. It lets you scan images in your repository for uh, known vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just announced GK Sandbox in beta, which mm -hmm. is using Google's GVisor technology to help you isolate untrusted uh, code in your environment, in, in multi-tenant environments. And uh, of course, we're working on more, but I don't have anything to share right, right away. All right. Maya, thank you very much. Thank you so much.